know there are blessings you can't receive. I just want to share one with you that happened this week. I, I am always, I always marvel to just look back and see the Lord do his work. And you know, now this moment, I have nothing to do with you. On Thursday, you know, my wife's school had their big, one of the big, big celebrations. And it was pouring rain. The sky was black. There was no sense that parents were calling. You all still having it? We say, yeah, we still having it. And so Melody kept looking up to the sky. I said, boy, it looked like it. I said, don't look at the clouds. Don't worry about how dark they are. We've trusted the Lord. Exactly 15 minutes before the event was supposed to happen, out of the blackness of the sky, the sun broke through, Amen. literally. You see, there are blessings you cannot receive until you know him. Well, it took me many, many years to come to this place of faith. Sometimes my faith frightened me now because I said, no, you can't have that much faith. But thank God, after many years, you start to learn you can trust him. Huh? And so, let's, let's just sing a, 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 just a happy, happy song. This is my happy song. Let's sing it today. Jesus our King, for the Lord has given me authority and the name above all names. Oh, we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We praise you, Lord Jesus our King, for the Lord has given me authority and the name above The rock is higher than I. I'm under the rock, and the rock is higher than I. Jehovah, hide me. I'm under the rock. Go tell my enemies I'm under the rock. I'm under the rock, and the rock is higher than I. I'm under the rock, and the rock is higher than I. Jehovah, hide me. I'm under the rock.
Oh, they say, they say they feel we need to praise just a little bit more. The reason why we like these moments of silence is to really worship God, you got to think about him, you know. That's why when you read through the Old Testament, God is always saying, now, when you pass this place, you had that experience, build an altar. So that when your children and other people pass, they say, what that is all about, you tell another great story of the Lord, hey? Do you all have your altars in your life that you go back to and say, Lord, I remember, Lord, I remember, Lord, I remember, and then after all the things you remember, it ends with one great statement. Great is the Lord. Hey, great is the Lord. But you got to think about him. Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory 
Good morning, Grace Community Church. I tell you, this is a shouting service. So if you're prepared to shout, you're in the right place. We have a lot to be grateful for, a lot. We're back in 1945. The Lord chose to put his hand on a group of people to launch the work called Grace East, East Shirley Street Gospel Chapel and now Grace Community Church. And so today we come saying, Lord, thank you for using us. Thank you for placing your hand on us. Thank you for the leadership that laid the foundation over so many years so that we, in 2023, can benefit from the experience of serving the Lord through the local church. So there's a lot to shout about. So we praise God for the opportunity and the impact that we've been able to make for the kingdom of God. And today, also a special feature in our service, we'll be celebrating the gift of a special man and his wife. Together they gave all to the work of the Lord. So we're going to come to the, those moments shortly, but we'll be recognizing Pastor Emeritus Leroy Pemi Tinkle Hannah, and Melody Rini Trico Hannah. The kingdom of God is the greatest, building the kingdom of God is the greatest work on the earth. There's nothing bigger, nothing greater. It's going to go all the way to eternity. And we've been challenged or commanded by the Lord Jesus to go and make disciples of all men. And so we will pray that God would continue to bless us and empower us so we'll continue the work until he comes to take us home. Shout, hallelujah. Thank you. Throughout the service today, we'll be highlighting persons who've been serving the church for many, many years. You'll see all over the spectrum, some just a few years and others a long time. But we're recognizing that there was a willingness to serve the Lord because they came to know him in salvation, the obedience to bring their gifts and abilities to the table, and their obedience to answer the call to make disciples. Of course, the first I'd like you to welcome and recognize is Chester Robards and Amanda Robards. Chester has been a member of Grace for five years. His wife, a member for two years. They were married three years ago. And when they got married, Chester said, come wife, we're going to Grace. And they're here today. But they're serving faithfully. Amanda, even after two years, she is serving as the director of the Ladies Fellowship team. Chester's in multiple ministries. Multiple ministries. But I invite you to stand as you join them, as they lead us in our call to worship. There's three of them. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, Grace. Good morning. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7, and 27, verses 7 through 10. We will read leader, and you will read all. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exalt him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the heavens of the earth, and the mountain peace belong to him. The sea is his. For he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Hear my voice when I call. Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will save me. The word of God. Amen. Thank you, Amanda and Chester. Remain standing. We'll have an opening prayer. I want to apologize for the absence of evangelist Ricardo Stubbs. He was to be here, but his wife is not well, and so they're 
seeing to that, to her health. But we want to recognize that he was representing the school ministry that's been around for almost 10 years, about 30 volunteers targeting at risk students, family life classes. Ricardo himself became a member back in April 2003. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful to these moments that we have to come together as your people. We recognize that you're the audience, that you have given the Lord Jesus the charge over us as the body of Christ. And you've lifted him up to our highest place, that at the name of Jesus we know Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that he is the Lord to your glory. And today, the Grace Community Church family is coming together to celebrate all that you're doing. Lord, we, take, we count it a privilege for you to choose to use us, that you've empowered us, you've gifted us, you've given men and women, children, young people, older persons, all for the body of Christ to take their rightful places to do ministry. And we say thank you for calling us, empowering us, and sending us out. May we be faithful. We know that you're always faithful, Lord. So help us in our weakness. And to this morning's service, Lord, we want all the praise and glory to be lifted up to you. Thank you, Father. You've been a good God. And we are praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Of course... Elder Pete and the praise team. Of course, the praise team has been around 100 years. That's, I, I say 100 because I can't remember how long, right? But it's been quite a number of years. But Elder Pete has been, according to the church's record, 50 years Elder Pete this year. has been a member of the church. So the faithful service. Let's give God the glory. Good morning. We have come to celebrate. There's a difference between a celebratory event than a regular event. Do I get an amen? amen? God has blessed this ministry for 78 years. And we're starting off our worship with a note of praise. We praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above we sang this song many, many times over the last 78 years. So let's worship the Lord together as we sing.
Bible, God. You're praising God for every praise. Let's put it right in there. Every praise is to our God. And then, you know, God love a grateful people. Are you, is your heart full of gratitude toward God? I am grateful that God, by His Holy Spirit, got my attention. As a teenager, and I said yes to him. Do I get a witness? Do I see other persons here today who are grateful that you said yes to Jesus? 
and he forgave you of all of your sins, not just the sins of that day, but the sins you had not yet committed. Pastor Hannah and I had a wonderful time together yesterday, and he said something to me that was profound. Not that that's the only thing he said that was profound. But th he asked me, think of this. When you think about the mercy of God, just think about that. The mercy of God. Let's be grateful. Let's be grateful. I am grateful.
the right to be seated. <laughs> I don't want you to think I can make you stand again. But, you know, that song just, just should touch your heart because, I mean, ingratitude is a sin. I hope you realize that. Even from little young ones who are growing up, we teach them to say thank you. Thank you for the glass of water. Whatever it is, we just show gratitude to God. Amen? And so Grace Community Church is grateful. And now we're going to invite Indira Colby. Indira has been a member since April of 2018, that five years. And very recently, we're so proud, she led the team to Ireland, the short-term mission team. So taking that, that command to make disciples of all nations seriously. So welcome, Indira, as she comes to share our mission statement and our vision statement. Our mission statement, <clears throat> Grace Community Church exists to bring people to Jesus and membership in his family, to develop them to Christ-like maturity and equip them for their ministry in the church and their life mission in the world in order to magnify God's name. Our vision statement, Grace Community Church is a body of believers in Jesus Christ who love God and love people, where members, while imperfect, are categorized as passionate disciples of Jesus Christ, learning, serving, transforming, and growing in their relationship with God and one another. Adding to the church by reproducing disciples for Christ every year, embracing opportunities to experience deeper fellowship through love for one another, experience best in small groups, offering multiple services and many opportunities for believers to be fed and grow spiritually from the word of God, increasing resources to do more ministry, maximizing effectiveness and return for the glory of God. Thank you. Thank you, Indira, for sharing that. I hope you appreciate that we're reminding you that's what Grace Community Church is all about. Our commission is the great commission that came from the Lord Jesus, and our vision is to do just that, reproduce disciples. Every single person sitting and listening to my voice should be involved in reproducing other disciples because you've been discipled, and we follow the Lord Jesus. We have a couple of video presentations that will highlight the various activities and ministries going on and we want you to pay close attention this first one and the second one and this is entitled using our gifts in ministry good morning i'm excited to just be here with you today church just to let you know about the school ministry school ministry is a fantastic fantastic ministry god has really been doing a great thing inside the schools it's being tough sometimes, but I will tell you it's very rewarding. Um, over the years, um, I've been so privileged to be able to go into the schools to reach hundreds of boys who are troubled. Um, they have been receiving God's word, taking part in the ministry that um, I've been sharing with them in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many of them have given their life to the Lord. Um, doing Bible studies is the most exciting thing that I get to do with these young people because many of them don't go to church. But the ministry has been so good. Nine years has been um, commitment to making sure that children have reached around the country and making sure that they know who God is. The, the fantastic thing about it is so many of them are coming to know Jesus. And we can see it in the transformation of the kids around the school, the excitement to just see me come to school to, to speak with them. So I tell you, be encouraged. There's big things going on inside the school ministry around the country, and more and more it's growing every day. So I would encourage you to come out and join us, man, and be a part of what is so great here at Grace Community Church. This is where children are touched by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello. My task is to speak to you about GRACE Initiative, GRACE, an acronym G-R-A-C-E, God's Reading and Caring Encounter, a ministry of this church that was founded by our sister Helen Turnquist some 16 years ago, 
when she identified that there are boys, in particular in our community, teenage boys, with significant behavioral issues who could not read. The program began at Simpson Pan and then it was brought to Grace on Saturday mornings, every Saturday, 9.30 to 11. So far, hundreds of students have passed through the program and been able to improve their reading level, improve their grade, improve their overall performance in school. And my task today is to also invite you to volunteer. It's an easy program to learn. You're involved in the lives of young people. You are mentoring them. You're getting to know their families. It's a wonderful witness of what the Lord can do. So you bring your gifts and you bring your abilities to the table. Allow the Lord to use you to bless somebody, to bless a family, and you will see the reward. It's a joy to see teenagers who are struggling build their self-esteem, build their self-confidence, and it will boost their behavior and boost their overall performance in school. The program is a community service program, so we're providing a service to the community, and there's no fees charged. It would really be great to have more of you coming out, volunteering to assist as we seek to impact our community, our world, with the gospel, with love and care for families and children, teenagers who need help with reading. Thank you. We now are going to invite the youth praise team. I was trying to figure out how long they've been around. We had a little debate, but a historian belonging to Elder Pete made it clear to me that was 2018. I couldn't believe it. 2018, when they first ascended the stage and took over worship leading. They've expanded their team and they're still serving and they've gotten better and better and better. And I say, to God be the glory. So welcome them, show them some love as they come to lead us in a couple songs. It's the youth praise team and band.
Hello. There we go. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm sure that those of you who have been crying for more praise and worship would have been quite pleased this morning, right? But give God some glory. Maybe there'll be more. We don't have to wait until we get to anniversary to give you more praise and worship. Okay. At this point, I want you to welcome Megan Pete. Megan has been a member of the church for, for the past 16 years, but she was born, according to the record in the, in the CCB system, <laughs> But Megan was born into the church. You know, her parents got met and got married here at Grace, and she came along. I don't know. I don't, let's, let's not go there, right? How many years ago? <laughs> I want to stay in her good books. There we go. But more, more, Megan is the director of the nursery ministry, and she's brought along with her Mona Lisa, who has also been a member for 16 years. And they're going to come and give us a welcome for today. We extend a very warm welcome to all of you, including those, those of you who are regular part of our fellowship. We also extend a special welcome to all of our visitors. You are our special guest. When we call your name, please stand. Gwen Bain, Stephanie Billings, a visitor with Bridget, and Eddie Roll the sister of Dario. You are our visitor today. We would like you to stand and be acknowledged. Okay. We are honored that you have chosen to worship with us on the occasion of our church 78th anniversary. God has kept us and guide us, guided us over the past 78 years. And we are grateful and express our thanks and praise to him for this day. As a nation and a church community, we look back on what God has brought us from and through. And we acknowledge that we have truly been blessed. We are also pleased to advise that we have a nursery ministry where persons who love God and love children are available to care for your child or children while you enjoy the service. Please do not hesitate to embrace this service. Our team of nursery workers are very happy to assist parents with their little ones in this way. Thank you for being here. I trust that you will be spiritually refreshed in the Lord as you share this time with us today. Following the service today is a takeaway reception in the Herbert Tricot Hall Center. The entire congregation is invited to share in this reception. At the reception hall, we will also be cutting our anniversary cake and we ask you to join us for this event. Again, welcome to Grace. And <clears throat> okay. and you can bring your babies. We're waiting. Let me clarify, ages zero to three. <laughs> Thank you very much, Megan and Mona Lisa. We also want to say a warm welcome to those of you who are joining us by way of YouTube, you know, the broadcast live on YouTube. This is Grace Community Church, and we're celebrating our 78th anniversary, and we're happy that you're able to tune in. Of course, congregation, I need your help with this one. We want to extend a warm welcome to Elder Sarge and Sister Stephanie, who I believe are joining us on YouTube. Let them know we love them and we miss them. Okay, now I invite you to stand and us just to come forward as we have a offering covenant. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, Luke 6 and 38. Honor the Lord with your wealth. 
with the first fruits of all your substance, then your bonds will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Give, and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let's give thanks. Father, we thank you for your many, many gifts. On a day like this, Lord, our minds are flooded with the many blessings that you've been pouring through this local assembly. And we say thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for the provisions for each of our families. We can sustain our own homes and ourselves. And then we can contribute to the work of the church. And we say thank you. Thank you for using us. May every penny that is given be multiplied by you. In Jesus' name, amen. We have birthdays and anniversaries that so we want to celebrate. Here at Grace, we take celebrations seriously. Whether another year of life or another year of love, there's a lot to be thankful for. If you're celebrating with us today, stand up, give us a wave, or even a shout as we honor you today for your special occasion. Here are the birthdays for the week. On November 4th, we have Miriam Duncan. On November 3rd, we have Trayvon Kerr. On November 1st, we have Skylar Hall, Ricardo Smith, Cohen Mott, and Ramona Pete. And celebrating with us tomorrow on October 30th, we have Leo Mariah Johnson, Lashan Dean, and Janelle Bethel. Here are your anniversaries for the week. On November 4th, we have Dr. Charles and Patrice Ramming. And celebrating marital bliss with us today, we have Danny and Gabrielle Wilson. From all the folks at Grace, we send virtual hugs and pray you have a blessed day. Chase Just Grace Choir to participate in our 78th anniversary. We want to say happy anniversary to Grace Community Church for 78 excellent years of service to our community, touching and changing lives. Today we recognize that nothing could have happened unless the hand of the Lord was on this ministry. And it is our prayer that the hand of the Lord will continue to not just be in this ministry, but first of all, dwell among his people, that we may continue to see God do a move through this church. Come on, y'all can clap your hands, stomp your feet, do whatever you need to do. We had a worship 78 years. God has been good. of my own but it's the hand of the Lord that's upon me it's no goodness of my own but it's the hand of the Lord that's upon me come on choir
thankful for anything. Yes, I know that it's the best hand. I know his hand, I know his hand, I know his hand, hand. I know, I know, I know it's the best hand.
So yes, I know that it's the best hand. Know that it's the best hand. One, two. I wonder if you all noticed the drummer. We have a visiting drummer. That is Nelly's husband. Nelly's husband, Llewellyn. What do you Aswood, Mr. Aswood. On the keyboard. Who's the keyboard? Give us your name. Nato, Nato on the keyboard. Very good. Thank them. Thank them. But you know, as much as you enjoyed that music, those words were powerful. The hand of God is on you. Wow. Wow. Imagine what you could do in the name of the Lord. If God is empowering you and his hand has called you and he blessed you and he's sending you out. Okay, now we're going to, there's a few news items. But I want to encourage you to follow the newsletter. Um, Tony, we just have one, I think, we want to highlight the ladies. I don't want to get in trouble. It's Sinead. Yeah, my Sinead's my friend right now. The ladies are looking forward to an event um, this coming weekend, and they invite all of the women in the church. It's a glory simulcast with Jackie Hill Perry, and um, you need to sign up. There's a fee involved. The, the flyers have been circulating, but we really want you to join them. This team, this team has been working real hard to provide something meaningful for, for women. And we want you to join them. So please, ladies, they're counting on you. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Thank you. Now we want to show the second video, Ministries Throughout the Year. It says, we need your help. So if this is coming from the HR ministry. Yes. Hi, I'm representing the Human Resources Ministry here at Grace Community Church. Our purpose is to align members and followers with ministries at the church. Today, you will see some of the ministries that are in most need, such as nursery, awana, hospitality, media, and ushers and greeters. Children must know why they need to be saved, why Christ died on the cross, and what salvation brings. The Awana program is an important part of our children's youth ministry program here at Grace Community Church. The purpose of the Awana ministry is threefold. To reach boys and girls with the gospel of Christ and train them to serve them. The second purpose is to reach parents and family members with the gospel. And thirdly, to train adults to minister to children. Our world needs a hope that only Christ gives. God is using Awana to raise up kids, parents, and leaders devoted to knowing scripture, loving him, and reaching others with the gospel. The Usher and Greeter Ministry of Grace Community Church has as its mission to assist in providing a true spirit of worship to members, followers, and visitors alike by creating an environment which will show reverence to God and provide an opportunity for persons to truly know and acknowledge God. The church Usher and Greeter are the doorkeepers in the house of God and we play a very pivotal role in the worship service of the church. Nothing is more rewarding for us in this ministry than to hear new members coming in saying the reason they wanted to become a part of our church was because of the warm welcome they received. Apart from the ushers board, the hospitality ministry is one that gets to meet all new visitors that come through the doors of Grace Community Church. We prepare a small banquet in their honor letting them know how appreciative we are of them visiting our church. We get to know their likes, their dislikes, whether they enjoy the service, whether they're going to come back again. It gives us joy to know that we're doing a good job as a church when they give us such rave reviews. My ministry is the Grace Community Church Nursery. We take children from the age of zero to four, and we engage them during Sunday school, and during the church service to provide parents with a safe environment for their children while they participate in various church activities, be it the 
breakfast, the Sunday school, or church. All right, the most exciting and rewarding thing for being a part of ministry, you get to impact youth. Uh, in some cases, you get to teach. Some cases, you get to lead. Some cases, you get to mentor. You get to impact youth. So you actually play a role in someone's lives. You play a role in how society will be formed. You play a role in how church will be formed. So to see people come up and say they want to do this or that, and sometimes getting people out of uh, the elements where they're comfortable, so you get them engaged. They may not be entirely comfortable in what they've been asked to do, but as long as they have a willing heart and spirit to see them grow, because that's what it took for me coming up. People pulled me along and pulled me out of my shell, so to speak, and got me to do things that I didn't know I could do or definitely wasn't comfortable doing. So to see someone acting in their gifting is most rewarding for me. The media ministry at Grace has become an indispensable tool augmenting our worship experience, facilitating broadcasts via radio, television, and internet, assisting in Christian education, enabling off-site coverage of events such as Easter at Atlantis, and as a media provider and facilitator for area schools and community organizations. Media has been a part of the church's life from the time of Gospel Bells, which was run by a young and talented Marcel Lightborn and the late Ed Allen. We have grown with the times and technology and can attest to some of the best presentations in sound, projector presentations via pro presenter, video production, and radio and internet broadcasting. God has really blessed us in grace with very talented sound and media persons over the years. We continue to invite you to join our teams as we seek to enhance the presentation of the gospel and ministry here at the church and to the world. We believe that it is our Christian mandate to serve in at least one ministry. We hope that what you've seen today is of interest to you. If not, there are many other ministries in the church that you can be involved in. If you're interested in signing up, please contact the church or an HR team member. Thank you. Now you have formed. The church has work to do. There's plenty of ministries. There's no reason why every single member shouldn't be in at least one. At least one. I know. Yeah, I know Dave like that. Number one. There we go, at least. So there, right now we'd like to invite you to join, to stand as we have our prayer song again, pastoral prayer. Elder Pete, who's the chairman of the board of the elders, will come and lead us in that time. And we invite you to come forward as we have our prayer song. I mean, we've been singing, but the hand of the Lord upon you. Now you know he got you in the palm of his hand, in good hands. Good afternoon again. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you to take your seat for a second. Pa Pastor Hannah, uh, um, just bear with me. I see the adult praise team finding their way in while they're coming in. I just want to ask a favor of a few people. Sister Angela, Sister Shirley, please stand for me. Pastor Marcel, Pastor Rex, Elder Charles, please stand. Friends, take a good look at them. Take a long look. Good, long look. As we celebrate 78 years, these are the remaining stalwarts. Thank you very much. Missing today is our oldest member on record, Sister Marjorie Trico. We say hello to her in Chicago. You know, the task for me to pray over God's people is easy. 
because of the work these who have gone before us have done. We must always appreciate the people that God that paved the way. Now you can stand as we sing in good hands as we move into our prayer time. Jesus said in Matthew 8, 16 that he is going to build his church. He was speaking to Peter. I will build my church and the gates of hell or Hades will not prevail against it. You believe that? Yes. He is still building his church. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The church is his. This is the essence of the gospel. Jesus is building his church church, his kingdom. For 78 years, he has been building Grace Community Church. For 78 years, he has been building and he's been using human persons to get the job done. Grace Community Church has been tested, tried, and yet she prevails. She prevails. So we pause to give thanks to the Lord for all the men and women he has used to build Grace Community Church. Many have been promoted home to glory. Men like H.W. Farrington, who started the ministry here like elders George Lunn, Elder Herbert Trico, Pastor Ed Allen, and women like Sister Doreen Major, Sister Bernice Kelly, and Sister Welma Allen. And then those who remain, I single out already for their contribution to the ministry. We still thank, thank the Lord for them because they are present with us. Pastor Emeritus Rex Major, Pastor Emeritus Marcel, and Sister Leela Lightborn, 
Pastor Emeritus Charles Wallace and Sister Angela, what, uh, Sisters Marjorie Trico and Sister Shirley Burrows. Lord, we thank you for the contribution these souls made to the advancement of your kingdom. They stood true when others moved away. They remain loyal to you and to this community. Where would we be without their contribution? We thank you for the younger generation that followed them. Uh, recently retired uh, Pastor Emeritus now, Leroy Tinkle Hannah, and his wife Melody, and Elder Emeritus Gregory and, and Teresa Williams, along with the current serving leaders are carrying on the mantle of leading your people in this next generation. We're grateful for the privilege you've given us to serve your people, uh, receiving the baton from those who've gone before us. And we ask, Lord, that you would use us as you have used those who've gone before. And we're thankful. We're grateful. We're also grateful, Lord, for every ministry director and their teams. We could not have succeeded without their support. We must take, make special mention of those who provided music over the years, whether in choir or solos or in whatever form. We thank you for their contribution. We praise you for the um, praise team and band that has come on in the latter years. We pray for our global missions department and short-term missions we heard from Indira earlier, but we must give thanks to Jewel and Tina uh, for the leadership they've given over these many years in short-term ministry. We thank you for the, those who've led our young people. Uh, again, Pastor Stewart and Jewel and those who've led the way and, and passed the baton on to now Elder Davy Adams and others who are leading the charge. Thank you for those who've led Awana over the many years. We particularly give you thanks for uh, the teams of Andre Major and Shasta Major, uh, Tony and Marianne Wilson. Uh, they have held Awana leadership for many years now, Lord, and we pray for suitable replacements for them as they have borne the heat and we would like to see a transition there. So we ask that through this service today, the, the appeal has been made that uh, younger persons will step up and offer themselves in that ministry area. We thank you for the aesthetics ministry led by Sister Charlene and, and, and her team uh, that make our environment pleasant. Uh, we, we know that everything that is used to help to make the ministry happen is because people offer their skills. We're grateful. And so we look forward to many more years as we continue to build and nurture this ministry uh, for your glory and the good of all who benefit from it. I ask that you continue to use us to impact our community, our country, and the world for you. For the needs of those standing before us today, we ask that you would address their issues. We lift up our sister, um, Sonia LaRoda, who's been on a journey needing medical attention and has been postponed and postponed. We are grateful to learn that she is next in queue now, and we look forward that she would meet all the requirements and her surgery could take place. Uh, for whatever the other needs standing here, Lord, you see them. You know them by name. You know their home address. You know whatever else is going on that we don't see. You see it, so we ask that you would minister to each need. As we continue in the service today, we pray for the remainder of what we will receive, particularly the word from Pastor Lyle today. May we be open to the instructions. We believe he have a, an appropriate word for us today. So we ask that you would help him as he gives that word. May none of us leave without our needs being met. We thank you and again praise you for these 78 years of witness. You know, as I paused and gave some reflection, I thought about the one of the two of those powerful opportunities for us to touch the entire country, reach out to live with dignity and honor as we raise the standard for the country. And then 
in modern times to reach out with Tony Evans, how we use technology to touch the country. Lord, you've used us sensibly. And we again thank you for all the men and women uh, that have played their role and you continue to use. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to begin our segment of the induction into the Grace Community Church's Gallery of Honor for Pastor Emeritus Leroy Pemi Tinkelhana and his beautiful darling wife, Melody Irini Tricolana. But just before that segment begins, we are pleased to have the children, Promised Children's Choir, the Children of Grace, to minister to us in song. They'll be followed by Pastor Emeritus Rex Major. Gift you gave 
Just, just, just before they leave, just before they leave, just before they leave, I, it's quite appropriate for you to be on your feet, letting these children know how much we love their contribution to the church. But I want you to join me also, join me also in, in recognizing the leaders of this ministry, Rochelle Seeley, 19 years in this church as a member, contributing to the lives of these children. Colette Kerr, Colette Kerr, 13 years as a member of the church. And Kalei Job just reached and she's on the team. Kalei for two years as a member. Thank you, leaders. Am I missing someone? Oh, I'm, I'm Suzanne Hall. Suzanne been 100 years. Okay. <laughs> 100 mean, I don't know. <laughs> Hello? And Wendy as well. Okay, another 100. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless you. I'm sure that when you got up this morning, you got dressed, you say, yeah, this is one of those services I can spend a good afternoon in the church, right? And we have some refreshments to, to lift you a little bit before you leave here today. So thank you for patience with us, right? But I just want to ask you to join me in, in showing our appreciation to Beijing and a team, the I Art for the second Jesus March yesterday. Let's encourage them for their efforts. 
Rado, thank you for giving to the Lord. Coming from the children, right? And now we invite Pastor Rex to come and lead us in the induction ceremony. Hasn't it been wonderful? Yes. A lot. I hope you could say in all honesty, this is the best place to be right now. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share in this moment. One of the struggles I had with working with the Christian group called Brethren was our difficulty in honoring our people. The argument really was, well, the Lord will do that when they get to heaven. But I had a conviction that God will do his work, but I have to do mine on earth. So I jumped out and did what I thought I should do. We began here in Grace with the Grace uh, Inspiration Award. Do you remember that? Yeah. I'm a little sad that it's been discontinued. But it was very precious to pull people out and they were always good times. It was done in the middle of a big, big dinner outing, and people could really dress up in their non-church clothes, you know? We just want to invite the children to leave for Grace GCC Kids. Okay. I apologize. Yeah, okay. They should have gone. Okay. We could sing. Let's clap them out. Let's clap them out. If any of you here were recipients of that Grace Inspiration Award, stand now, please. I hope we will be restoring it pronto. Then I introduced something else in the Brethren heritage, the emeritus recognition. Those who we feel have served well and are no longer as active as they used to be to be recognized. And then the third step was in 2005, on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of our church life, I introduced the Gallery of Honor. The Gallery of Honor. My task now is to lead that segment for the church because today we are so pleased, so Please. Nobody has pleased with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
so pleased. I would like the present living members of the Gallery of Honor to join me now, please. Charles Wallace and Angela. And Brother Marcel said, Sister Lila couldn't make it, and Marcel Lightborn. Sister Lila wouldn't make it. Now, two, one member is still alive from the other team, Sister Marjorie Strico, but she's not here. And my wife left me four years ago to go to Jesus. <laughs> so I am left alone without a partner. Will someone come on my right and somebody on the left, please? Stand around. Marshall, you come here and let Charles and his beautiful wife show themselves over right here. <laughs> well, come ahead, Lamont, let people see you. Okay. Do what? Why? Thank you, hubby, and you lovely girl. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? <laughs> Just a few words and I will pass it on to others. The, the, um, pardon? When I read it, when I read it, then, 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 yeah. Um, now I say this very meaningfully. Today, we've taken a few moments to bring to your attention a wonderful couple, and the present past emeritus, Leroy Tinkle Pemi Hanna, and his precious wife, uh, some a special woman, really special woman, yeah. Melody Irini. Trico Anna. Yeah. Will you loving couple please come forth now? Right on the right hip, uh, by, by Marcia. Okay. You come close to me. Yeah. No, right on the right, please. Yeah, will be seen. Oh, yeah. Gotta fix myself. It's all right. Come, come. Close. Come forward. If they can see you. Come forward. All right, friends. Come on out. Appreciate these people. Then. Thank you, thank you. Now, I'm making this request with an honest intention that it will happen. We need a full two hours with these couple, just this couple, to announce clearly and truthfully their contribution to this church. However, at least now we pause to recognize them. Um, it, it should help you to know 
that this is the only church environment that Melody has ever known. Fifty plus years. Membership. And she, with all of her attractiveness, pulled in this wonderful fish out of the sea. <laughs> Far superior to Grouper. <laughs> Pastor Marcel has a few words to say now. Thank you so much, Pastor Rex. It is my good pleasure, really, really great pleasure to be with you today, sharing in this experience. Originally, I had a note saying, a very pleasant good morning. I had to change that <laughs> afternoon to just simply say thank you to our leadership, Pastor Rex for inviting me to be a part of this experience. This is indeed a very special day in the life of Grace Community Church, but more particularly in the life of two folk who have been an extremely powerful blessing to this church Amen. over the years. Amen. very faithful service. Firstly, to our Lord Jesus Christ, then secondly, to the upbuilding of this church after many years advancement in the kingdom of God. It is a privilege for me really to be afforded this opportunity to share in this event, remembering that some 18 years ago, I also underwent along with my wife, the same experience, to be inducted into this, what I might call a gallery of honors. I got that word from Pastor X. <laughs> All of our services were with one goal in mind, the expansion of the kingdom of God through our ministry, our lives in this church, winning souls to Christ, and advancing them in spiritual growth. I believe, with God's help, the effectual working of God the Holy Spirit, that has been accomplished to a vast, vast degree. Accordingly, therefore, it is my good pleasure to welcome to this August body of, a, of I'm not supposed to say emeriti, of honors. Uh, dear brother and sister, Leroy, Pemmy, Tinkle, Hannah, and sister Melody, let's see, I had her, yes, Erinissa, Hannah, I think, I, I, I trust I got that right. Irini. 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 all right. Uh, Trico before Hannah, all right. I just want also to ensure them of my pleasure and prayer that they may advance continually in the kingdom of God, causing that many, many more will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in their lives. Mel Melody and Hannah and, and, and Tinkle, I really want you to know that I've appreciated your life and your experiences and your services in this church, your prayer for me, and I want you to know that I will also be lifting you up highly in God's prayer for the advancement of his kingdom continually in your lives together. Blessing to the Lord be with you now and always. Another member of the Gallery of Honor, Charles Wallace, 
We'll now have a short prayer, a short prayer <laughs> for the couple. Come, Brother Charles, and your wife could stand with you before the mic, please. Privilege of mine to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, our Savior, we give you thanks for this privilege of honoring these two with you today. Thank you for it as we give thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. There are now some certificates of presentation. One will be put up in the church permanently. One, one will they take home. will be done by our present senior pastor, Lyle Bethel. Thank you, Pastor Rex. Uh, on behalf of the church, I really do want to, because you're, you're going to see it's part of my message, give thanks to God that God used Pastor Rex to turn around something that never should have been, where persons who have done the work for the Lord get the appreciation that they deserve right here on earth when they can smell the flowers. So thank you, Pastor Rex, for setting a wonderful pace that uh, this and my pastorate, I am certainly continuing. Now it's my pleasure to give to Pastor Hannah and his beloved wife, Melody, uh, two, two um, photos slash documents that they are to hang on in their home, but the larger version of the, the one with the blue background you see there, that's going to be hanging in the gallery of honor and right after the cake cutting, uh, we will, those of us who are still here, will go and watch the unveiling and the hanging on the conference wall, all right? So that's the way we're gonna do things. Listen, my message is a part of all that's done, so we really want you to hang around. Don't look at your watch, we did one service today, so it's two services bound into one. We're going to love the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Pastor Hannah and Sister Melody. Someone want to hold this for me? All right. Okay. Thank you. Well, who's taking a photo of you up here? <laughs> All right. Pastor Hannah and Sister Melody. Here is, here is a... Um, the document that's going to go on the church wall. It's uh, approved by, uh, I believe, your family as a good representation of you both. But um, it reads as follows. Associate Pastor Emeritus Leroy Pemmy Tinkle Hanna and Melody Irini Hanna, um, you are uh, being inducted into the Gallery of Honor at Grace Community Church on Sunday, October the 29th, 2023 on the occasion of its 78th anniversary. And so we want you to hang this in your home very proudly. And uh, hold on to that. I've got another one I want to show you. Uh, this one is the actual document signed by the present leadership of Grace Community Church with your, um, our, our signatures and uh, the writing affixed with your photo at the bottom that we likewise want you to hang next to this photo. And so uh, we're presenting this to you today. And Pastor Hannah, we also have a gift for you and Melody. I'm going to ask my beautiful wife, the lovely Janelle Bethel, to come and present these uh, flowers to you, Sister Melody. And if Pastor Stewart would uh, bring me the, the gift for Pastor Hannah, I will uh, take that as well. Okay. Um, while those photos are being taken, Pastor Hannah, we can get in the picture too. I think he's ta taken a few. And uh, while, while um, that's taking place, Pastor Hannah, we have a Bible here that uh, the leadership, um, while away at our special training uh, a couple of months ago, uh, we picked up a wonderful Bible for you. It's called the Care and Counsel Bible. Lots of good counseling material in here, and it's signed uh, by the present pastoral care board who you served many years with. And so we want to give that to you as a gift as well. So hang on to that. <laughs> Pastor Anna says, I was tired of him taking my Bible.
Congratulations to Pastor Emeritus Hannah and beautiful Melody Shriko Hannah. Of course, you know, there was a little, a little um, processing, as Pastor Rex said, 50 years for Melody. And we know Melody's born in the church, so got to add a couple of, maybe a decade or not or so, right? <laughs> but Melody has been around a long, long time from birth, a part of the church. So we give her honor for that. And now we want to invite three other ministries to come and share a scripture reading just before Pastor Lyle comes, or 44. We will welcome Kayla Hilton, representing the Human Resources Ministry. Kayla is one of those who've been around like Melody from birth. Well, we're not gonna mention the years because she looks so young, right? She said yesterday. But she has been around for a long time and she's been a member, according to this Kayla, since 1982. So even a membership is 41 years. So. That's a long time. And she'll be followed. I'm going to just do everybody. Dr. Winston Phillips also sharing a scripture reading with us. 17 years in the membership. Time is flying. Commander Andre Major, 35 years as a member. And we have uh, the baby coming up on the end, Andronique Bethel, three years as a member of the church. And she's representing Word of Life. Um, Andre is representing Awana and Dr. Phillips is representing the medical ministry. Can you stand please for the reading of the word? Thank you. Our scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 verses 4 through 12 and 14 through 31. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gift of healing by the one Spirit. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and is still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts from one body, and so it is with Christ. Good evening, church. Continuing the reading of the scripture from 1 Corinthians. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason it stopped being part of the body. And the air would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Good afternoon, church. The, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. <clears throat> On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, 
are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that, part that, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Good afternoon, church. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in each, has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. This is the word of God. Amen. You may be seated, thank you. And now we're pleased to invite our senior pastor, according to the record, December 1984, 39 years as a member of this church, and we know 21 as senior pastor. He's coming now, and 30 years of marriage, so we invite him to come with the word. 31, sorry, just the anniversary passed the other day, yeah. To reach out to man, to show him your love, and your purpose. can hear the cries of sinners, but can I wipe away their tears? Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Do use me, Lord, to show someone. Thank you, everyone, that has enriched our service today. Wow, how powerful. Avery and the Just Grace Praise team, I don't know what happened to them today. They took it up a couple different levels. Wow. Insane. We have been treated today, uh, all of our various musical ministries on display, but beyond that, in our planning, we made sure that you saw all the areas in the church where people are using their gifts to make an impact to do a part of building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hang on, hold on, and recognize that God has a word for you today, and I pray that you're ready, you're listening, and there will be a response. Bless, O oh Father, the remainder of our time together. Thank you, Lord, for how we have been treated to understand that um, long before we came along, persons were involved in ministry, giving all that they had and all that they have, their gifts and their talents, to the building of Grace Community Church. This church did not appear out of thin air, but it is the visible manifestation of men and women uh, who have done their part to build the kingdom of God. And Lord, as we've seen, they are aging, and some have already exited the scene. And so... It's our time to do that which you've called us to do while it is yet day, for night is surely coming when no one can work. So may we be found faithful now uh, when we have opportunity to use all of our gifts and not bury them in the ground. 
come Holy Spirit, I do not trust my own eloquence, my own study, my own skill to change the heart and the minds of men and women who could be hardened by sin. I need the Holy Spirit. And so I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. Break stony hearts, break through entrenched ways of thinking that have not yielded to you. Come, and may we continue to be treated this day, for we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus said, I will build my church. Who will build it? The Lord Jesus Christ. How will he build it? By means of the Holy Spirit operating in the hearts and minds of men and women sold out to the Lord who have each been given gifts and talents and skills by the Holy Spirit to do the work of ministry while they have the strength and time and energy to do so. These are all very important concepts, but listen to me. You want to be found doing that which has eternal value. That is building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of heaven and earth puts its emphasis on building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're doing anything else and you have uh, trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you're not doing that, my friend, I pray today rebukes you and changes the course of your life and changes your heart to invest all that you are in the building of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus is building his church, and for 78 years, the men and women, boys and girls of Grace Community Church have been co-laborers with God to bring this about. We've honored some of our leaders over the years as we are doing with Tinkle and Melody today. William H. Farrington, whose evangelistic work helped to found, establish many of the Brethren churches here in the Bahamas. Our members should become well acquainted with those who went before us and paved the way. Uh, Pastor Rex has mentioned many of them already. Uh, um, Elder Emeritus George Lunn, Pastor Rex and uh, Sister Doreen, Herbert and Marjorie Trico, Charles and Angela Wallace, Marcel and Leela Lightborn, and of course we've added to that now Leroy, Tinkle, Pemi, Hannah, and Melody Irini. Hannah, let's celebrate again with God how these men and women have made ministry happen, have made things happen because they took the endowment of the Spirit, they took their passion, their convictions, and they made things happen. Special shout out to Charles Wallace who said to that fledgling band of uh, Christians on East Shirley Street, Gospel Hall, listen, um, let's go to Palmetto Village and let's build a big sanctuary because God is doing great things. People said, no, no, sure. what you build? you're showing off when build a sanctuary for 500 people. Ain't no church going to have that many people. What a joke. Thank God for Charlie's faith. Thank God for Charlie's faith. And he wanted to hang up his horn when the Lord saved him, but he was advised, no, if the devil had it for so long, let the Lord have it now. And because of him, we can trace Pastor Hannah's amazing ministry and Melody and Sarge and Staff and Dave and all of them. We can trace all of them to a proper understanding that when God gives you that musical gift, bring it to the church and bless the saints who are there. Second point I want to make. We know that the church was powerless to effect change until the Holy Spirit was sent to empower the church for service and to convict mankind of sin through the pe preached word and ministry. Here's what Jesus says to us in Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power. You shall receive power. You will receive gifts and skills to build the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. You will. You will. You will. Or will you? Or will you? Or will you if you are not using your gifts? Or will you if you buried your gifts in the ground? Jesus says you will receive power. Why? To be his witnesses. To transform the world. Where? In your Judea, in your Samaria, which is people in your area who are not necessarily of your um, nationality. And also to the ends of the earth. We're not to feel that because God has us here we stay put. No. But every man, every woman, every boy, every girl has to bring their gifts to the table and use it to the glory of God. 
That's what needs to happen. You have received power to do that. What are you doing with it? Are you sitting on your hands? I'll tell you what some other people I know have not been doing. Oh, they've been giving their gifts to the kingdom and we've seen them on display and they've been building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, you are going to hang your head in shame when that great get up morning comes and these kids have sang what's going to happen and no one will say to you, thank you for giving to the Lord because you gave nothing. You gave nothing. You had, you had the power of the Holy Spirit available, but you didn't have time. And you were satisfied with other people doing it. But God gave you the power. God gave you the spiritual gifts. Why? Because Jesus is building his church. That's why you have spiritual gifts. That's why you still have time. That's why you're still in good health. And some people not in good health. They listen, I can't move my hands and my feet and so forth, but I could do the ministry of prayer. I remember when Charles Finney, what a magnificent ministry of revival. Charles Finney realized he'd go in some towns and revival would break out. He says, what's happening? This can't happen unless someone's in prayer. And God gave him an opportunity to meet a, a woman who was, who the only thing she could do was pray. Because she was stuck in a bed. But she realized though her body was stuck, her spirit was not stuck, her mind was not stuck, and she took authority in prayer, and she won souls to the kingdom while laying on her bed. I ask you again, what are you doing with the gift you've been given, with the time that you have, and the health that you have? What are you doing with what God has prepared for you? Some Christians let themselves get taken out left and right, doing foolishness, foolishness. You're not a part of, 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 of spiritual growth. You're doing everything but presenting yourself to God as a living sacrifice. You're not allowing the Spirit of God to break through your heart and heart. All about doing foolishness except serving the Lord. Beloved, let's move to our second point, our third point. Each believer is given a spiritual gift. How many believers? Each one. Each and every one has been given a spiritual gift to use in the building of God's kingdom. Now, we've already read all of this, so I'm not going to read it again. I'm just going to pull out some highlights. Things to know about spiritual gifts. J jump down to there, Brother Tony. Things to know about spiritual gifts. Well, we are to be aware and informed of our spiritual gifts. Here's what he says. Here's what Paul says. Now, concerning spiritual gifts... I don't want you to remain in your ignorance. You know, they got the open brethren, they got the closed brethren, they got the ignorant brethren. They don't know their gifts. Ain't try to know their gifts. No one's benefiting from their life. That's not the way God would have it to be. The Spirit of God took his time to impart spiritual gifts. You know what? I can give to Jasmine this gift. Jasmine, be faithful. I'm going to give to Melody this gift. Melody, don't hide your talent in the ground. Make, occupy with this while I come. Wendell, here's your part. Make for me even more. That's what God does. He gives gifts. And he's building his church. But are you helping him to build? Or are you sitting, wasting time, and no one is benefiting because though Christ died for you, you fail to die to self. And you're living foolishly and selfishly to the praise of your own glory. Secondly, we're not to neglect the gift. We hear in the scriptures from 1 Timothy, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on the hands of the eldership. Timothy was told, don't neglect your gift. And I'm here to tell you, grace members, and those who are following in our midst, don't neglect your gift. Don't neglect your gift. The church needs your gift. The church needs everyone because not everyone is an eye. You heard it, right? Well, if you're the eye and you neglect to use your eye ship for the rest of us, what's going to happen? Uh, let's go over here. What that is? What that is? What did, what did right way? Can I see? You with me? Something about to fall on my head because the air ain't functioning there. Bam, I get hit in my head. 
because I'm not functioning in my gift. You can't neglect your gift for the good of the church. You have got to use your gift if the church is going to grow. Three, we will be held accountable, friends. We will be held accountable to God for the use because we are called to be servants, stewards of what we have. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Each of you should use whatever gift he's received to serve others. Each of you, each of you, not that one and that one, all of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards. Do we have some unfaithful stewards here? As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Listen to me. Listen to me. A couple of months ago, we celebrated Brother Greg Williams. When the man came in here, his hair was all black. In fact, he, in fact, he might have came without a beard. Then the beard came in, black, and you see now it's all white. You see, we need to understand that we only have a window of time in which to operate. You've got to be accountable in the use of your gift when you have time. Four, we will know God's perfect will and our spiritual service when we know our gifts. We're told to not be transformed, to be transformed rather by the renewing of our minds. Then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and perfect will. You see, when someone is submitted to the Lord and they're following him and they're obedient to him, their gifts and skill sets become evident and they know that this is where God has placed them. You see? This is why at Grace, we, we don't just grab someone and throw them in an area. If you don't know how to talk to nobody, you, you believe that your, your, your stink attitude is just who you are and the Spirit of God don't have to change it. You could be sure you ain't going to be a, a greeter or an usher. Because, I could tell you, because Angela Wallace was a greeter one day, we got Associate Pastor Carlisle. The fellow walked in the church and Angela's greeting of him was so, so wonderful. Of all the churches he'd already visited, he liked grace. Why? Because Angela Wallace was at the door. You understand me? We're told to use our gifts, but then at the end of the chapter we read, Sister um, Andronique read it, uh, Paul says, but let me show you a more excellent way. And we know what the more excellent way is. He says, listen, you cannot use your gifts without love. If you use your gifts without love, you're like a, you're like a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And all you do is irritate people. All you do is annoy people. We're to use our gifts in the spirit of love. We are, to, we are to manifest the gifts within the church context in a way that people receive the love of the Lord Jesus Christ through us. When we do this, we will know how to serve. It says we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. You know, Gr Greg Williams knew that God had given him the, 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 the ability to to. to, to take a little money and make plenty he was a banker for 30 years manager for 20 years and um, realized you know with him retiring he wanted to give all of his gift to Grace Community Church and thank God he did yes, he put us squarely in the block and then some because he knows how to manage the Lord's money with integrity and with faith we will have a more focused ministry when we know what our gift skill sets are. And we will know serving satisfaction by being obedient and fruitful. God has called us to be obedient and fruitful. Beloved, the whole church will benefit when each one is using his gift. And there will be less strife and less jealousy because, listen friends, the Bible says the Holy Spirit gives a gift. You can't get vexed with me that he gave me the gift of preaching and didn't give it to you. You can't get vexed that he gave Brother Dave the gift of playing the horn and you know you can't hold a note if I put the note in your hand and close your hand over it. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit who gives the gifts. We need to thank God that he gives the gifts and pray for each other. But there's no place for jealousy when we recognize that the Spirit of God is the gift giver. And he gifts as he wills, not as you want. As he wills. 
And finally, when we use our gifts, God will be praised. Listen to this. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Speak the word. Let me tell you something. My biggest pet peeve is to hear someone read the Bible and the Lord said that Adam should go and did. I'd be like, don't they know they're reading the word of God? What? You have to put your everything into that. You have to speak with clarity. Announce. Let the people way back there hear every word. You're reading the word of God. What are you, are you having a whisper party? That's why, folks, you know, that's why you don't just put anyone to read. You, you ain't being, you're not being mean, you know. If that ain't a skill set, person can't talk, bust up the English language, and massacre the Bahamian dialect, well then, you know, maybe put them somewhere else. But the word of God should be read with clarity, with, a, with excellence. When we have outside voice, thank you, Gotti. We tell people at funeral, when we're conducting, conducting funeral service with the family, uh, who do you want to be your readers? Okay, can they read? Do they read well? Are they going to be okay reading during the service? Well, all of these things we, we try to do because they just put, they want their niece to read, but their niece can't read. If anyone serve, they should do it with the strength that God provides so that in all things, God may be praised. That's what we're after. When you do your gifting to the glory of God, folks are blessed. So here's a quick summary of spiritual gifts. Every Christian has at least one spiritual gift. Unbelievers do not have spiritual gifts. They may have talents, but they're not spiritual gifts given by the Holy Spirit for the church's benefit. No Christian has all the gifts, or to put it another way, there's no spiritual gift that every Christian possesses. Listen, if you're an heir, don't fuss the eye that the eye doesn't hear well, because the eye cannot hear. And that often happens in the church. Well, how come you, well, how come, well, how come, because I have a different gift, that's why. Well, how come you don't see that? Because I'm, I, I hear better. Are you with me? And if the whole body was an eye, you want everybody to be just like you, where would the hearing be? Boy, I thank God that, that we have all kinds of gifts and grace. And one thing about me, one thing about me, I sniff out a gift set and I say, you know what? You need to be this. I remember when our church was really began to realize we needed to uh, grab our man, marriage ministry and make to take it to the next level. I'd been watching Cardi and Hope for a long time and I saw, their, I saw their passion for this area and so forth. And so I said, Cardi, I'd like to start a marriage ministry and I want you and your, your wife to run it. You see, I look around and I believe I picked this up from, from, from Pastor Rex, but the Lord also gave the gift as well, where I realized that if I'm gonna make the church stronger, I gotta get out of the way. I, st I stay in my lane. You ain't gonna get me at every meeting because I still have a family. Well, well, Pastor, you need to be this. No, I don't need to be at that meeting. So and so is running that meeting. And I play in church for no one's approval. Done that long enough. My thing is make sure you keep your family together and make sure that there are men and women in place to run the various ministries. Because no one has all the gifts that they should be every place. Amen? amen. Pastor, Anna, give me an amen over there, man. Amen. You, <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love to put someone in place. That means that's less work for me. Moses had to learn that lesson, trying to serve three million people. His father-in-law told him, Moses, what you doing ain't good. It, it, don't even, it even make any sense. How you alone can minister to three, th uh, three million people? Catch yourself. Find some capable men, put them in charge, and the hard work they send to you. But you need to sit, sit small, go home, and look at your wife and children, and stop being here from dawn to dusk. I said earlier, we cannot choose our gift. Spiritual gifts indicate God's call and purpose. God you, gifts used without love do not accomplish God's intended purpose. And spiritual gifts are to edify the body of Christ. Sorry, that white is not working well, is it? That's why you all need to learn to sit in the front more. <laughs> but I can leave that there. All right. Fourth major point. Oh, and this one chills me to the bone. Read it with me, folks. Jesus has his eye on the church, watching all that she is doing. 
Or you all think you could just skylark? Uh, have a church and do whatever foolish as you want to do? Seven times. Seven times in Revelations 2 and 3, Jesus speaking to his church to say, I know, I know your works. I know your deeds. I know what you're doing. I know that you've entertained that woman, Jezebel. I know that those who are, what these other people are doing in your church. I know what's going on. I am building my church. My eye is on the church. The spirit of God is in the church and I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. When Israel was sent into captivity, God took Ezekiel, grabbed him by the hair, yanked his spirit out of his body and said, come, let me show you what they're doing in Israel. And he went in the temple and everywhere he looked, wickedness in the temple. Wickedness. They worshiping Timot over here. They doing this over there. Wickedness in the church. I call you to understand we are the people of God called to righteousness and holiness. There's no place for self-glorification in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Crucify yourself that Christ may live in you. And use your gifts and skill set to build his church. Seven times I know what's going on in the church there. Point five. Each age, every age has its challenges that require a special focus. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. England, oh, England was struggling. Gambling, sweethearting, drinking, dueling, all manner of wickedness on top of all of that, the slave trade. And God says, I will raise up a man for myself. And he raised up William Wilberforce, a part of the Wesleyan revival. And under his, under his powerful influence, God used him to change the, the very image of England. He brought all of his skill and acumen to the table, and he transformed England. But we know him most especially for overturning the slave trade. I thank God that William Wilberforce didn't just remain a politician, simple and small, and when he became a Christian, say, well, you know, I gotta, I gotta get out of politics because Christians ain't supposed to be in politics. No, 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 no. He, he brought his, his, his Christianity into politics and he transformed England. He transformed the country. I thank God for William Wilberforce and what God do through him. And then, of course, in England, there's a, in, sorry, in the States, there was a Salvation Army. Can you imagine? Things were so horrible, drunks and derelicts, prostitutes and homeless all over the major cities. And God raised up William uh, Booth and others to start a movement. He, he, he realized that preaching in the church was not in that era accomplishing everything God wanted. He went out into the streets, the highways and byways. And pretty soon, hundreds of thousands of men and women were finding a place to be sheltered. They were, they were broken out of that which broke them. Gambling addiction, prostitution, homelessness, helplessness. The Salvation Army, an army of volunteers who knew their gifts and talents and skills and knew what time it was, transformed it all. I thank God for the Salvation Army. They recognized what time it was and that they needed to get to work. Who else do I thank God for? Well, my hero of the faith has got to be George Mueller. This man, converted from a life of lying, Stealing, drinking, gambling, carousing. God grabbed this young man and transformed him. He was one of the leaders of the Plymouth Brethren, of which uh, uh, um, the Grace and the Assemblies of Brethren are a part of. But because God grabbed this man's heart, England that was struggling with tens of thousands of orphans because of the prolific living of men and women, dropping children all over the place. Here are these homeless children, uh, children of people who would have died in wars, and they were just roaming and no hope, no help in the world. But this man, God grabs his heart, realizes what time it is, and by faith, this man starts, at the end of it all, five orphanages where at least 10,000 children would have come through his orphanage, and he would have, he would have given them uh, a, a faith, a, a, a culture, a heritage, character, all of these things so that they became productive men and women 
in society. When they left him at the end of their time, he gave them a Bible in one hand, a, a, a money in the other hand, and a tin trunk with two chains of clothing. He said, listen, it's up to you now as to the influence you're going to make. One of my favorite stories of this man of faith was, um, here it was, once again, um, he's trying to go about his uh, business in the morning, praying for things, and the house um, helper comes to him and says this. Next slide. The children are dressed and ready for school. There's no food for them to eat. One of the orphanages at the time. No food for them to eat. But friends, George Mueller was a man of prayer, and George prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed endlessly, and he never asked for money. He just prayed, and God brought him in, brought it in, an amazing man of faith. So this is what the house mother says to him. George asked her to take the 300 children into the dining room and have them sit at the table. He thanked God for the food and waited. But friends, listen, he didn't have to wait long because in not too short a time, Pastor Mueller, the Spirit of God would not let me sleep. And I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I felt that God wanted me to know that those children would not have bread to eat this morning. And so I've been up, up all night making this bread. Please tell me that I didn't stay awake in vain. He says, yes, sir, we've been expecting you. Come right in. The bread is barely on the table. Yes, the milkman. Brother Mueller, I'm sorry to bother you, but listen, my milk tray broke, my milk cart broke right in front of your door, and I realize all this milk is going to spoil. Brother Mueller, can you and your orphans use this milk? There comes a time in every age where God raises up men and women who know what time it is and know what they should do, and they are prepared to make an impact for God. So let us recognize that it's important for us to be ready and to be available to be used of God because we've been listening to the Spirit and the Spirit's being, been letting us know what we should be doing. Point six, serving others is actually serving God. Now, if nothing else I said move you, let me encourage you to have some common sense. No one could pay God back, right? But Jesus makes it clear to serve others in his name is to serve him. I mean, let's do the math. This thing makes sense. Let us do all that we can to serve people in Jesus' name. Here's how Paul puts it. Whatever you do, Whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. It is the Lord Christ whom you are serving. It is the Lord Christ who you are serving. Do your work as the insurance man. Do your work as the banker. Don't let them other tell us Bring your name down with theirs. You be the excellent teller wherever you are. You be the excellent worker, teacher, wherever you are. Why? Because you are serving the Lord, not other people. And they will always get your best because you're doing it for the Lord. Lord, here you go. Here's my best for you, Lord. Not, not my leftovers. Here's my best I give to you. What else? Here's how Jesus states what we should be doing in a positive way. To the extent that you fed, gave drink to, visited, clothed, lodged one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it for me. You did it to me. Brothers and sisters, are you hearing this? Who would waste time building an empire unto themselves? Who is that lacking in common sense? That they would be like that man who says, listen, I got a bumper crop coming in. Here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my old barns and build new barns. And I will say to my soul, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said to him, you fool. You can die tonight. You will not see that harvest. 
You're going to die tonight. And who will get that what you produced? Don't be foolish. Live your life to the praise of God's glory. And may whatever harvest he brings to you, may it be given to the glory of God. Here's how he puts that in a negative way. To the extent that you did not feed. Come on now. This is the only place in scripture where we hear what judgment's going to be based on. Now, I'm not saying this is the only thing, but it's the only one that the Lord gave us. Come on. To the extent that you did not feed, give drink to, visit, clothe, and lodge one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Grace, grace is not in an impoverished area. We're in a well-to-do area. But we know that my friend Walter Hanschel is in the belly of the ghetto. And so what Grace does, we use a part of our monies to finance that ministry. Because we may not be there, but that doesn't mean that we can't influence what takes place there. That we can't make sure that people are fed, uh, clothed, and sheltered. And you know what? Maybe even some of our members could help, help, help out there as well. On your free time when you're not involved in ministry here. Well, there we go. Because who knows? God may use what you learn there to help us to do something different here. There we go. We need to see as Jesus sees. The Bible says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped, but made himself nothing and took on the form of a servant and being found in the appearance of a man. Jesus was about downward mobility. And we are called to serve others. You know, to serve someone, you got to get your hands dirty. Yes, yes. To serve others, you got to risk being inconvenienced. What's that dirty word Pastor Larry just used in the church? Inconvenienced? Surely not. Friends, every time you hear, and as Jesus was going, someone stopped him. That means he wasn't going to them. As he was going here, he was stopped. And most of Jesus' ministries are interruptions, the ones that are recorded in scriptures. Can anyone interrupt you from your goal making, from your empire building? Can anyone interrupt you to get the word of God? Sila, think on these things and question whether you truly are representing Christ in what you do and say. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Are you serving or are you just sucking up the air can do in grace? <laughs> Critical of all the ministries. How come grace don't do this? How come grace don't do that? Don't go there with me. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, what are you doing? Or how are you enriching what we're already doing. I'm very proud of the ministries of Grace Community Church and those who have given their endeavor best and who live and think constantly how to serve others. You see, serving is a form of worship. We're told, present your bodies, your mind, your talent, your spirit, your gifts, present your bodies as living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. You see, friends, we worship God when we use our gifts to bless others. We worship. Two more points. Seven. Oh, this one scares me. Beloved, we must be careful not to build with wood, hay, or stubble. Be very careful your attitude of ministry or lack thereof. Be very careful of seeking vain glory unto yourself. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it. What day? What day? The day of judgment, friends. Because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. 
but he himself will be saved yet as through the fire. Next slide. Beloved, when your works are tested by God's judgment, what will the divine fire reveal? Gold, keep it there, gold or hay, wood, and stubble that will be burned. Next slide. Let that sink in. Fire will test each man's work. All wood, hay, and stubble will burn up. What about your contribution to ministry? What about the gifts and skills that you have been given? A couple of months ago, we spoke about how each man was given a talent or several talents and told by the master, use this until I return. Do business with this until I return. Jesus has given you gifts to do business until he returns. He's given you the power of the Holy Spirit. He's given each of us a gift and a skill set. He's, he, you don't have to do this on your own. You have the power of the indwelling spirit and, and all things are possible with those who, be, who believe and have the indwelling spirit to help them. We can accomplish great things. And we're not doing it alone because others have been given gift skill sets that complement yours. You see, the eye, the ear, the seeing, the, the smelling, the hearing, they all operate in one unit, it's part of the head. And they can give direction to the foot and say where to go so that what the eye sees, they can get there and send the hand to reach out and grab it. You see, we work together. It's how the church works. We work together. Different gifts, the same spirit operating in us to bring about his good and perfect will. Finally, finally, beloved, I said this two weeks ago. You need to examine yourself to see if you truly are in the faith. If the things that this pastor has been preaching today is so. You've been given the gifts. You have the power of the Holy Spirit available. You have time, health, energy, and everything. And the church receives nothing from you. No one is blessed. No one will say in heaven, thank you for giving to the Lord. They will, they will say, well, I was right next to you and I didn't even know you as a Christian. Do you know I found out like 30 years later that some of my friends were Christian? And Jasmine, I'll talk with you later. I, 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 I want to say to Jasmine, Jasmine, did you know that that person was a Christian? No evidence. None. I always, I always think, say, Lord, why you didn't save me in high school? You know the convictions I have? I'm a lunatic with my convictions. I just think about how many of those friendships I would have friendship. I mean, I spend most of my time running to drug addicts from my friends. Get from around here. You know, you know if they take this drugs, what can happen to them. Get from around here. But imagine now that righteousness in the body of a believer empowered by the Lord Jesus Christ trying to bring souls into the kingdom. Hey, but the Lord knows whatever. That was my stubborn heart uh, that was keeping the Lord's the spirit from grabbing me, so I can't blame no one else. But listen, we are to test ourselves to see if we are in the faith. So let me wrap up with this. My closing comments. Next slide. Oh, I didn't read it, eh? Let me read it for you. No, no, no. I we'll read that. Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you, or do you, that should be not recognized this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test. But I trust that you will realize that we, are, that, we, that we ourselves do not fail the test. Every believer should test where they are in the faith. So I want to close with these thoughts. What do you have to say about your stewardship? Your stewardship, not mine. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about the person in the pew next to you. You, you. If you are a Christian, I talk to you. If you're not a Christian, not talking to you yet, but I'd like to have you trust my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and receive that which he's given me. First question, are you sure you're in the faith? What explains your absolute abysmal use of your time, energy, and effort on the earth? What explains it? Do you even know what your spiritual gifts are? If you do, where are you using it in ministry? Where? Did you hear... Stuart's daughter say we have many ministries that need help 
you, you know, I intentionally told you about George Mueller and, and the Salvation Army and, and, and um, William Wilberforce because all of them organized many persons to do the work of ministry. Our biggest challenge in this country right now is wayward young men and women. And we have a means of reaching them available to us. It is the school ministry. It is beyond my ability to understand how it is that we cannot get more than, let's see, I believe that the school ministry has maybe about six or seven, maybe eight or nine persons from other churches connected with us. I doubt that we can find 20 people from Grace Community Church who could take an hour in their week, take a lunch break to go and take prepared materials and impact boys and girls in our local high schools. How you can't find that time? Why can't you find that time? Do you know, if we don't win these kids now, we're going to be looking perhaps down the barrel of a gun from them later? Come on! The Salvation Army took drunks off the street, homeless off the street, prostitutes off the street, adulterers off the street, and converted them and transformed them. We're not called to be salt in a jar in a container. Salt is best used when it's poured out. We are the solution to the world's ills. We are the church, not some government program, the church. The church has the power to change it. The church has the gifts to change it, the skill sets to change it. What it needs is the determination and the availability. And that's why we sing that song. Lord, I'm available to you. My money's available. My time's available. My gifts and skill sets are available while I still have health and while there's still time. Where are you being used in ministry? Or have you buried your talent? This church has existed, existed for 78 years. 78 years of people's faithfulness, men and women, boys and girls. You heard the Iwana ministry. These, these, these guys have been doing that ministry for a long time. They, they're ready for a break. Who will, who will replace them? Who? Do you serve to please man or God? Some people feel unless they are in the spotlight, they, they, they don't have time for ministry. Oh, really? I remember when I was washing dishes in Indiana. Learning lessons, learning humility while I was serving other people. But you, you won the limelight, eh? Oh, okay. Watch it get burned up. Watch it get burned up. Are your works in danger of being burnt up? Let me close with a word of prayer over us. And I pray that this message would move us out of complacency, move us out of apathy, move us out of indecision, move us out of a laziness of, of, of thought that someone could finally get something out of you. Friends, God has invested a whole lot in building his church. That's the only thing that he's about. And he's so intent on building it that he's given gifts of men, pastors, teachers, counselors, evangelists, to get the church saved and ready and matured. And then he gives to every one of us gifts to build the church. But we can sideline the work of God by getting involved in frivolous sins, in bickering and carrying on, in bearing our talents. Or we can receive the word of God that's been implanted that can save our souls and we can put our hands to the plow, not looking back, and watch souls saved for the kingdom for all eternity and look forward to getting to heaven where someone will say to us, thank you giving to the Lord. You did it in the dark, but here it is. You are receiving the glory for it in the light with billions of souls watching on as your hidden work for the Lord is made known and magnified. Friends, there's no greater work, there's no greater ministry, and there's no better time than now to serve the Lord with all that you have. And so let me pray for you right now. And 
If you'd like God to put an extra unctioning on you to be about it, if you want to say to God, God, I know I've been slack. I know I've been irresponsible. I know I've been hiding my gift in the ground. And Lord, I'm standing today to acknowledge that and to repent and say, God, use me in a mighty way that with a little time I have left, you get all of my gifts and talents, my skills, and my gifts to your glory. Those of you that want to receive, you want to repent and let the Lord know you're serious, stand your feet. I want to pray for you specifically that God would do a great work. Yes, I see that. Folks beginning to stand. What about you? Don't look around. This ain't no look around kind of message. This is a, is God talking to you kind of message. And I, I pray that more would be standing because I can tell you sometimes I don't feel that I have given. Pastor Hannah wouldn't mind me saying, and I spoke with him about him receiving this reward. And believe it or not, Pastor Hannah didn't feel worthy. Pastor Hannah didn't feel worthy. With all that I know this man has done over the years and how he's given himself entirely to ministry, he didn't feel worthy. Boy, some of y'all, if Pastor Hannah don't feel worthy, I don't know what you should be feeling. So I believe this is an opportunity to tell God, God, you know, I'm tired of playing games with you. I'm tired of hi hiding my talent in the ground. I'm tired of being irresponsible. And so, Lord, they say young life saved is a whole life saved. Lord, well, a, a, a new life saved from this point on, I'm using it to, to be a blessing to you, to serve you uh, by serving others. Heavenly Father, behold the men and women, young men, young women, standing in your presence. Lord, they recognize by this word today, you've said something to them, and they recognize, Lord, that you have not gotten their all. You've not gotten the better part of who they are. They know, Lord, that they've kept some back. They know, Lord, that they haven't put their hand to the plow. They know, Lord, that you are not pleased with what they have given you. And now, Lord, I pray by your Holy Spirit, break stony hearts, break through hardened hearts and minds and, and grab their hearts, Lord, and bring them into a wholehearted consecration and submission to you. Holy Spirit, they can't do it alone. They can't do it in their own strength. They've tried before. Lord, some of us can't even lose weight by wanting to. And so we recognize it's not necessarily a human effort, but it's a yieldedness to the Spirit of God. So Lord, we yield to you. We ask you to change us, change us, transform us, transform the way we think, the way we reason, the way we just muddle our way through the world, own us. Lord, we repent of sinful attitudes. We repent of not taking you and your word serious. And we ask that you would do a great work in us beginning now. Here's my heart, Lord. May it be your throne. Sit on my heart. Direct the course of my life. Use me, Lord, as you used Wilberforce in a time that was assigned to him. Use me, Lord, as you did William Booth and the Salvation Army. Use me, Lord, as you used George Mueller to do my part for the kingdom as only you can make it happen. We thank you for the Helen Millers, Helen Turnquests, that saw that there were those who didn't know how to read and started a ministry. Thank you for evangelist Ricardo Stubbs who started or rather enhanced our school ministry. We know, Lord, that there are other ministries that you can birth in our hearts. Do so, Lord. May our hearts be ground that your word can sprout forth as a seed and bring forth a harvest that men and women would be saved because we said yes totally and completely to the Lord. This is a prayer we make in Jesus' name. Now then unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And all God's people said, amen and amen. The musicians are going to play right now.